This is going to be somewhat of a crash course, and I'm not going to waste a lot of your time with chit chat. It's going to be raw information, things that you need to know to actually do this. And like I said in the introduction, this is not your regular, you know, internet marketing kind of stuff. It's not get rich quick. It is if you want to actually do something, some some work, and not that internet marketing is not work. It definitely is work. But if you want to actually create stuff, uh, you know, a, a while ago I had the opportunity to do a lot of internet marketing. I, I work with a lot of internet marketers, and if I wanted to, I could cut away and do a lot of that kind of stuff myself. But I really enjoy creating actual content. And as a matter of fact, Jeremy and I are going to do a little bit of working together because Jeremy is a fantastic internet marketer. So he enjoys doing that aspect of it. Well, I enjoy doing this aspect of it. And if you want to make money online, you don't have to do it with internet marketing. You can do it by doing what I do, working with media, audio and video. To get started, you're going to have to have some basic equipment, and we'll just deal with the equipment first here. Depending on exactly what you're doing, that's going to determine the kind of equipment that you're going to need. But I'm going to list for you some basics. As far as audio is concerned, we'll kind of go through my studio a little bit. Uh, but some of this stuff, it's, it's just optional depending on what you're going to do. For audio work, you need a large diaphragm condenser microphone. You can get these with uh, powered by USB. In other words, it's just a microphone. It's a USB mic. You plug it into your computer, and you're ready to go. I prefer to process a lot of my audio in line, meaning I do some things with the sound. So in order to do that, I have to have a regular audio microphone. Now, you can get this kind of stuff for anywhere between $100 and $200 for a low-end mic all the way up to several thousand dollars for a high-end mic. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make you, I'm a pretty hardened audio buff, but I'm not going to preach to you about everything that you've got to do because that would be, I mean, literally probably a 10-hour course if we did that. But you're going to need a microphone. Then you're going to go from the cable of the mic to a USB or a Firewire audio capture card. You might think, just go to Walmart, get a $10 microphone, you know, plug it into the PC sound card, and you're ready to go. Well, if you do that, you're going to end up making stuff that sounds pretty junky. Now, while as an internet marketer, you might be able to get away with doing, you know, a testimonial or something like that, uh, recording audio that way. But if you're going to do media as your business, then you've got to have good quality. You're not going to be able to sell that kind of stuff to people. Okay, so it's a little bit of an investment. The audio capture device will be maybe $1 to $300 for what will handle your microphone, just a single microphone, possibly handling two microphones. You'll also want to get some type of audio uh, processing. This would be a some kind of device that has a compressor built in, an equalizer, possibly a downward expander, and even a de-esser. Now, again, I'm not going to explain what all of that stuff is. Uh, there are, I'm in the resources section at the end of this course, I'm going to have a place that you can go and you can find out a whole lot more about that kind of stuff. Okay, But this is just more of an overview. That's the audio equipment itself from a hardware standpoint. Now let's take a look at the programs that you're going to have to need uh, to know how to use. And this, again, a lot of these are optional. These are the programs that I use in and out every single day. That does not mean there's not a replacement out there. I'll be mentioning some of these. There actually is uh, uh, an application in here that I don't personally use, but I'll be mentioning what, the, what those are and where they come into play. The first thing is the basic video editor and this is critical if you're going to be creating videos. You can't just record a clip and then pop it up there. Not if you're creating content that needs to be professional. So here's the applications that I use. Adobe Premiere Pro, and again, we're talking about video editors here. Uh, let me mention real quick. A video editor allows you to have multiple tracks of video. You can place different elements on those tracks. You can add transitions. 
You can do cuts, fades, resize the video, and produce the video in a variety of different formats. That's what a video editor does. Not to mention you can mix in audio and do all kinds of stuff. This entire video, again, that you're watching, the entire course is put together inside of Sony Vegas Pro 8. And that's another video editor, one that I tend to use more. I used Adobe Premiere Pro for a long time, but once I found Sony Vegas Pro, it kind of replaced it pretty quick because I like the way that it works. Now, on the Macintosh side, a very popular video editor is Final Cut Pro. And incidentally, Macs are great for doing video and audio work. I have uh, I have a PC and I have a Macintosh. I tend to stay on the PC just because of familiarity. The Mac, and this is by no 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 means an offense to Mac users, the Mac stays in my other room and uh, my wife uses it for email mostly. <laughs> I got it though because I wanted to try out uh, Final Cut Pro and see how that worked and see if it was actually a whole lot better. Again, I still use my PC with Sony Vegas Pro today. It used to be that Macs and PCs, there was kind of a war and the Mac usually won when it came to audio and video. Today, they're pretty comparable though. Now, as far as audio itself, I use Adobe Audition. In fact, I am recording the audio that we're ta- that you're listening to right now in Adobe Audition. And I'm actually doing this. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways to create a video like what you're watching. You can create your content first, create your slides if you're doing it in PowerPoint, and then narrate it. But what I'm doing in this particular case, because I like the effects and the different, I wanted to you know make it a little bit more spiced up. What I'm doing is recording the entire audio clip first. Now, I I want you to take the visuals and I want you to take the quality and all that stuff into consideration. But I will say to you that from a professional standpoint, this is not the most professional production. And here's why. I am kind of shooting off from the hip on this. I'm sitting down and I'm going to just tell you my thoughts. I've got an outline laid out and I'm going to show you all about that later on. We're going to talk about process and and workflow and stuff. I've got a rough outline, but I'm kind of just talking to you from experience. I'm recording that in Adobe Audition, again, just the audio. And then what I'm going to do is bring that into Sony Vegas. I'll bring that audio in and I'll start to throw in my graphics. I'll start to throw in my text and bullet points. I'm going to synchronize that up with the audio. So the beauty of this is if I happen to be thinking of something spontaneously, and I say it, then I can go ahead and throw in the video for it after the fact. Again, this is just one technique. If I was doing this for, let's say, a training, a full bore training or a professional promotional clip, I would actually have a script and I would want to follow that along. I would edit out all the any ums or ahs or anything like that that I said. But in this case, again, I'm just shooting from the hip. So we've got Adobe Audition. What we do is with all these applications, a lot of times through my workflows, I'm bouncing in and out from one to the other. A lot of times I have several open at once. I might work on some video. And then if I've got some audio that I need to play with, I might port something over to Audition, play with it there, and bring it back. Now, Sony Vegas Pro and Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro, they all deal with audio but they're primarily video programs. Because I know you're asking, you know, why do I got to have all these programs? Audition gears itself specifically towards audio. So that means it has a lot of really good features designed specifically for audio. Some people can do everything that they need to do inside of Sony Vegas Pro. It depends on how complex you get. A lot of people using maybe Premiere, or Final Cut Pro, they get by just fine. It's just that I know how to use Audition, and I have it because I happen to be a musician, uh, and it does really good with multi-track recording and mixing and all that kind of stuff. So what happens is maybe when I'm in Premiere or I'm in Sony Vegas Pro, I have something that I need to do, and the tools inside of Audition, I already know about them, and I know that they can do a better job maybe than what's in Vegas. So I take that audio over to Audition and I work on it there. 
Okay, so that takes care of the audio and video editing for the most part. Another thing that I use extensively is Photoshop. That's another Adobe product. That's used to create custom graphics. What you're looking at on the screen right now is a custom graphic that was created inside of Photoshop. The reason that you're going to be creating stuff like this is for backgrounds or maybe for little things that pop up on the screen, logos, all kinds of things that you'll be creating. And yes, I will mention, this is a good point to illustrate this because Photoshop is pretty expensive. There are alternatives that are free or really close to free with all of these applications. So go out there. I might even put at the end in the resources section, I might even put some links to some free alternative uh, applications. But what we're dealing with here is industry standards. These are the things that pretty much everybody uses if you're serious and you're making money. What's going to happen is if you were to go out and start actually bidding on jobs and getting clients and making money, you're going to find that the free applications are free usually for a reason. So you want to be working with the best. Now, a typical uh, typical scenario, in fact, what I do probably 90% of the time is a presentation in PowerPoint. That's a Microsoft product. PowerPoint is one of those applications. It's the world's most popular presentation graphic uh, program. But what it does is let you make slides and put bullet points on and images and all that kind of stuff. You've all seen these types of presentations. You go to a seminar, they put on a PowerPoint presentation. Sometimes they're pretty lame. Sometimes they can be interesting. But that's the software that's used. You need to know how to use it pretty good. And that comes fairly quick. It's not a very complex application. And it does a pretty good job. Something that goes along with PowerPoint, if you want to kind of step things up, this is an insider tip. A lot of people don't know about this because Adobe bought a, a company a while ago that created a fantastic product for PowerPoint, but they kind of put it on the back burner and they haven't really done much with it. So this particular application kind of died out of favor, but it's called Ovation and it is fantastic. If you want to take your regular mundane PowerPoint presentation and turn it into something phenomenal without a lot of work. Ovation is the one. And again, Adobe actually has it. If you go to their site, you can do a search for Ovation and you'll find it. You still can purchase it. I will warn you though, it does not work on Vista and it does not work with PowerPoint 2007. In fact, if you even have Office 2007 installed on that computer, it won't work. It'll mess it up. So we're looking at, uh, I think, Office 2000 to 2003. Anything in there, it'll work fine. Okay, now, another way to get things a little bit fancier is with effects and animations and 3D and stuff like that. That's done with a couple of applications, both Adobe products now. Adobe bought Macromedia, by the way, several years ago, and they acquired a lot of applications that are geared towards this. One of them though, and the most popular by far, is Flash. You want to know how to use Flash for a ton of different things. Flash allows you to do some pretty interesting animations pretty simply. It also allows you to do some customization and you want to know Flash because a lot of the content that you're going to create will be delivered in Flash. That means it's going to be played in a Flash player. You want to know how to be able to customize those players. You want to know a little bit about how Flash works. Another thing, if you want to get real elaborate, is Adobe After Effects. Again, another Adobe product here. But After Effects, again, the industry standard. If you want to do animations, if you want to do short little clips that just, I mean, you can uh, do the lighting, you can do the 3D stuff, you can move stuff around uh, in 3D space. You can make things look really nice. It's got a ton of plugins available. A lot of neat stuff with After Effects. But like I said before, with all these applications, you're looking at four, six, eight hours uh, of a video course just on that application to learn how to use it. So when I'm done here summarizing all of these video clips, 
I'm going to tell you the key things, the most important ones that you need to start with, and then you can work up from there. Another one that's a really good to know and have is Camtasia Studio. And I told you we were going to go kind of fast paced, right? This is crammed full of information. Jeremy said, Ken, my customers are busy. I don't want any of their time wasted. I want them to get a whole bunch of content. And that's what we're trying to do. Camtasia Studio allows you to capture your desktop or just an application that you're using, just an area on your desktop, anything you want, basically. And it will record that, and it'll record your voice at the same time. Camtasia is an extremely powerful and popular program. Lots of people use it. In fact, later on, when I show you how to find work, Camtasia is going to be one of your keywords to look for. It's that popular. People actually use it when they list jobs, when they post jobs that they need done. Another thing that we're going to want is a way to deliver the content once we have created it. And by far, that means FTP because you're not going to be able to email most of the stuff that you do because it's going to be too big. And uh, it's not, it's usually cost prohibitive to next day stuff. Although, you know, I, I do have to do that on occasion. I even had a very large uh, video job that I had to do where it was well over 30 hours of training. And I had three 500 gig external drives, Seagate drives. And what we would do is I would take the first one, I would fill it with content, I would ship it out. And then I would be working on the next batch, and I would fill that one up. And then after they received the other one, they would copy the stuff. They would ship it to me. So there was pretty much always one in route and one at the two different locations. So we were constantly doing a cycle there. But again, that's kind that can be kind of cost prohibitive, especially for smaller projects. So FTP is where that comes into play. The program that I'm going to show you, there are several but the one that I'm going to recommend to you is Smart FTP. Again, the download link. All of these programs, I will show you where to get uh, trials to them. I'll show you where to download them. And usually in, uh, that's the same place that you purchase them from. So Smart FTP is an FTP client. It allows you to connect to a server and then upload whatever kind of data you have to that server. Then you will give your client a link later on and they'll be able to download it or you can even give them FTP access. Sometimes they will have an FTP server and they'll give you a username and password and then you'll have to connect and you know upload your work that way. But that's how it's done with an FTP client. This last uh, two that I'm going to mention here uh, are more like utilities, kind of they work with other programs. One is ProDad Hieroglyph. And it is a phenomenal tool. As a matter of fact, all the fancy text that you've seen in this video, done with ProDad Hieroglyph. It allows you, it plugs into Adobe Premiere, it plugs into Sony Vegas Pro, and a number of other applications. But it allows you to take the text and spruce it up, animate it, make it look better than just a simple fade. Okay, and some of the other lame things that PowerPoint presentations uh, typically have. So there's ProDad. The, uh, the last thing I'm going to mention right now, I may throw in some others later on if I think of them. So that's a disclaimer too. But the last one I'm going to mention right now is Prism Video Converter. This is an application, uh, one of many that is on the website. And again, that, the link's going to be at the end of the videos. It allows you to take a, a, pretty much any type of video, any format, and convert it into a bunch of other different formats. And the reason that I love this is because it's very simple for the beginner. It's easy to use. It works as a batch. So you can load up, you know, 15 AVI files. And if you don't know what an AVI file is, don't worry, you will by the time we're done. But you can load up 15 video files and convert them to a different format. Just turn it on and walk away when it's done then you can you know upload them or do whatever. And it'll even do Flash. It'll create FLVs for you. That is a, a pretty low-end editor because or converter because it doesn't give you a ton of options. You can make some changes, but that's kind of why I like it because there's not a lot of decisions that have to be made. Other ones, uh, Media Coder, that's another one. Open source even, you can get that one for free. 
but it's very complicated. It has a lot of options. Video encoding, just so you know, can be a very confusing topic, especially to a newbie. There's a lot of things to consider. So when you get started with this, you want to make that as simple as possible. So that's why I recommend uh, Prism. Another one is Sorensen Squeeze. And by the way, since I mentioned Sorensen, I thought right away of the price, which is pretty high. Uh, that made me think of Prism's cost, though I think it was about $30. So very reasonable. Uh, very, very reasonable. Sorensen is pretty awesome. Uh, squeeze will... It also does batches, and it takes it a step further. You can configure Sorensen with what's called a watched folder. And with that, you tell it to watch a particular folder. And as a, if you, as you create content and you save the content to that folder, it can be configured to automatically upload that to a server. So as new content comes in, it'll encode it in whatever format you selected. And then when it's done, it'll upload it to the server. So very nice and very convenient. And if you're doing a lot of conversion kind of stuff, definitely a, a, a good tool. What I mean by that, doing a lot of conversion, Sorensen Squeeze and other video converters are used. See, what I do and what you'll be doing if you do this kind of work is you create not a whole lot of videos. You might do five or six videos a day, maybe not even that much. You might do three or four. So that's not such a big deal, the automation stuff. But what Sorensen is kind of geared towards is let's say that you had a uh, 100 VHS uh, tapes that were copied or digitized onto the computer and you wanted to convert all of them to MP4 or to Flash even or to uh, some other type of format. It makes it real convenient and easy to do that kind of stuff. And then, of course, it'll automatically upload when it gets done. So that's what those kinds of editor, or those kinds of uh, converters are geared towards. For us, we're going to create a video. We might work all day on one video. And then at the end, we're just going to go ahead and encode one video and convert it to a different format. So that kind of stuff is not quite as important. But that is basically the... Uh, the applications that I use. Again, we talked about the equipment. I almost forgot I was going to let you know the ones that you definitely need to start with. And here we go. Camtasia Studio. I highly recommend that you start with that because you're going to make, uh, there's, there's opportunity for a lot of money in doing any kind of tr uh, training and demos and stuff like that even presentations and I'm not uh, like it's not necessarily doing a training on some type of computer program a lot of times I have customers that they want me to do training on some uh, topic and it's not necessarily a computer or anything that's related to a computer but you can do that with Camtasia if you use like for example PowerPoint so PowerPoint is another application that I recommend you definitely start with so we've got Camtasia, we've got PowerPoint, and then I would say the next thing, the next most important thing would be a video editor, a real high-end video editor like Sony Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. Of course, you also need an FTP client that's definitely critical uh, to be able to upload the files to servers and all that kind of stuff. So those are the programs you definitely have to start with. And then as you master those and you want to make things a little bit more robust, then you can start adding some of the other applications. All of this, the beauty of working online is that all of this can be outsourced. So, for example, let's say you had uh, somebody contact you and they wanted something created and they wanted it to be a little bit fancy, maybe with an opening screen uh, or some music or something put in there. And let's say you don't do graphics yet. You just started doing this and you're not really, you don't have Photoshop, you're not into it yet. You can go to some of the sites that I'm going to tell you, actually the same sites that you're going to go to find work, you can post jobs there and you can get somebody to create, you know, an opening screen for you in Photoshop. But this should be a good enough place for you to start. By no means does this mean that everybody that does what I do uses these exact programs. By no means does it mean that. Uh, there are other applications that people like to use. There are different ones that they like to use. I'm sharing with you what I use, and I'm quite successful with it. 
So let's go ahead and end this video. In the next one, we're going to discuss how to find clients. I'm going to show you where to go to look for those clients. We're going to talk about finding the kind of jobs that you want to work with. We'll go through the whole bidding process, how to structure your pricing so that you can bid accurately. And I want to talk to you about communicating with the client also.